So, my original intention today was to read two chapters of Hunter Hunter before I had to go to work. Was underestimating severely how much text I'd have to go through, so I only got to one chapter today. But, I'm going to make a review of it anyways. Uh, so, a lot happens in this chapter. Mostly just characters talking and theorizing, and man, there's a lot of text here. It's basically, this is straight up, you're just reading a novel now. You're not reading a manga anymore, you're just reading a novel. And I'm not saying that's necessary, necessarily a complaint. I'm just kind of stating the facts of what it is. Just like, wow, this is just so much information. The only problem with this chapter is a lot of it, a lot of the first half isn't really information that we didn't already know or suspect anyways. Second half gets a little bit more interesting, so let's just get into it here. The first half is basically Benjamin and his trainer guy, I don't remember his name, I'm really bad at remembering all the names of these characters. I'm bad with names in general, just like in life. If you meet me and introduce yourself, I'll be like, oh yeah, totally. And then a, two, a day later, you come around again. I'm not going to remember your name. I'm just bad with names originally. So when it comes to manga, especially ones that have this many characters going on, I'm really, really bad with remembering names. So I apologize. That's a personal problem. Not a problem with the manga itself. It's just my brain. So uh, anyways... Benjamin and his kind of trainer guy, the guy that taught him Nen, um, kind of the badass bald guy with a scar, they're talking about how when Prince Hulkenberg uh, basically took over one of the bodyguards of theirs and had him assassinate himself in front of the room, uh, Hulkenberg was trying to figure out what exactly happens when that happens, like what happens to the original person, because he sends his arrow into someone and basically takes one of his followers and puts it into the body of another follower. At least that's how I understand it. I could have got that wrong. Um, something along those lines. I wonder what happens to that original follower. Anyway, so that's what was going on when that actually happened, but now the other characters are trying to figure out, like, why did this bodyguard kill himself? And they know it's involved with Hulkenberg somehow, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but they can't really figure it out. And they're talking about how, you know, Nenbees can't kill each other because if that was the case, the Nenbees would already take it upon themselves to be fighting each other. So princes can't directly kill other princes. And I believe this was mentioned previously. Um, I can't quite remember if it was explicitly stated, but it was least inferred uh, many times before that the uh, Nen Beast cannot attack the other Nen Beast. Otherwise, there would be all out chaos happening on the ship. They have to do it more covertly, not to mention the fact that it is illegal uh, to, <laughs> and that they will be criminally punished if they kill the other princes. So, the succession war itself, not only do they have to kill off every other prince, but you also have to do it in a way where it's sneaky, it's covert, you're doing it not directly, you're doing it to avoid the legal system. Like, nobody can really know about it except for the people. And everybody does know about it, but we just can't talk about it. You know, it's one of those things, which is, is true to life in many ways. Um, so they're trying to figure that out, and they're, they're worried about Hulkenberg and what exactly he can do. And Hulkenberg's my boy. As I said, ever since that one chapter where he went to go confront his father, I have completely been won over by Hulkenberg. I am one of his followers, I love him so much, uh, but he, uh, he gets uh, taken away because they call about, they're, they're worried about Hawkenberg and his abilities, so they pretty much just do the only thing they can do, they try to get rid of him legally. <laughs> so, he basically gets detained. He gets taken away for, uh, I believe, for the murder of the guy that, that shot himself in front of the room. I, I don't know if specifically that was the reason. Um, I didn't have time to reread this chapter twice, which I wanted to do before I filmed this because I wanted to film this today. Um, but I believe that's the reason. So Hawkenberg's being detained, the poor guy. Then the chapter shifts over to the character of Tyson, the Prince Tyson. And she, uh, I haven't really talked about too much because she hasn't really done too much. She's just a very like loving, seemingly loving, caring, like uh, younger person. And she wrote a book that she gave all of her bodyguards and all of her followers to read. And this has to do with her Nen Beast and Nen ability. Something about the book basically winning them over to her, thinking she's so great, praising her. You know, it's just, it's basically like a big loving community. Unlike, um... Sal Sal, who kind of had another ability similar to that to get everybody to like him, but that was more of like a uh, party, sex, drugs, rock and roll kind of thing. Uh, Tyson's is more of just like a very wholesome, loving, like, let's just bring everybody together, guys, kind of thing. 
And apparently if you read the book that she gives you, it gives her, I, I don't want to say some kind of control, again it's not explicitly stated, but it wins you over to her more so to the, like um, the one bodyguard was saying now he wants to see her win the succession for when their job originally is just to protect the prince, make sure the prince, nothing bad happens to them. Now he's kind of being won over to the point where he's thinking like, hmm, yeah, maybe she should win. And then that would infer that he would have to take it upon himself to go after the other princes in some way. So it's a very subtle manipulation technique that's going on, but I believe you actually have to have read her book for it to take place because the other bodyguard, um, Karapika's original trainer, is like, you know, feeling kind of strange about what's happening with that. So that's kind of cool uh, to see what's going to happen with that. And then, of course, we get introduced to a whole another line of story that could possibly be going on that has been going on this entire time. Uh, original, the second prince, Camilla, who is currently locked up because she did attempt to kill Benjamin directly, so she is in some sort of jail holding facility right now. Uh, she has a bunch of followers that are specific, a specific type of follower called the Untouchables. And I suppose the Untouchables were uh, a part of an ancient cock and ritual where an untouchable would be chosen to be buried with a deceased prince so that that prince's ghost or spirit or whatever would not haunt the current prince in power for being the one in power while one is dead. Now, I would that would lead me to believe that what was actually happening is uh, the Nen getting stronger after death theory, whereas, uh, you know, after you die, if you set certain conditions and your focus determined, like, say specifically that you want your Nen to act in a certain way, um, with complete conviction before you die, that Nen, your energy, your life force energy, will then go on and then complete that task. So, what I think this is meaning is that if a prince has awakened Nen and dies, you know, it would be, they would be spiteful, they would be angry that another prince lived and took their place. So, therefore, they would probably put some condition on their Nen to uh, be able to attack that person after their death. Um, similar to Camilla's ability where her Nen Beast is literally, if she gets killed by somebody, that Nen Beast takes the life force energy from that person and puts it back into Camilla, essentially reviving her. So I think it's something similar to lo along those lines is where the ritual comes from. Uh, so the Untouchables still exist, they're still around, and Camilla has basically won them all over. She basically treats them like people, she gives them, you know, all the things that they never really got, they never really were considered high up in a class system, and, um, a lot of this arc, um, kind of deals with this, like, class system thing, because we're dealing with the, the princes on the top level, we're dealing with all the people scrounging, you know, on the bottom level, we got the mafia groups, like, mid-level, all that kind of stuff, like the the idea of leveling, you know, and succession war, you know, there's there's symbolism in there somewhere. Uh, so the Untouchables, you know, they uh, they are all basically won over by Camilla and have this um, ability gestating inside them, where they can curse and kill, or basically poison, kill another prince. And how they do this is that uh, they keep something of that other prince with, with them. For the example, the untouchable that's around Benjamin has a picture of Benjamin, and every single day they have to look at that picture and basically wish death upon this person. Basically like building and building and building energy, um, which you know dates back to a lot of different uh, theologies and things throughout history and mankind where people believe that you know if you focus your energy day in, day in, day out, that you can eventually release that energy and uh, have it perform a purpose. Um, this is something not created by Hunter Hunter. This actually exists if you look up into energy healing and things like that. So, but this is kind of uh, in like a curse aspect of it. So basically, you're building up your energy to focus on killing or you know hurting, harming something, and then basically the condition is that they have to take their own life in front of whoever it is they're cursing, and then that person will be uh, all their aura, their nen will be taken away, and they will die shortly after. Very, very cool concept. In fact, I think one of the coolest concepts of the Succession War arc since its incarnation. Um, the thing with the Mafia group and, uh, you know, the, um, what's her name of the Mafia group that can kiss somebody and give, awaken their 
or a, in, to use Nen. Um, that's very destructive. That's that's cool in itself, but I don't find that nearly as interesting as the concept of these untouchables being able to curse somebody. And of course, the harmful condition that they have to do in order to enact it, which is killing themselves in front of the person that they're cursing. And one of the untouchables is uh, thinking he's going to go after the easiest target, the baby Prince Wobble, which... Karapika is the bodyguard of, so we have something brewing there that could possibly be very, very uh, intense. Also, Wobble is the only prince who we don't know uh, who's Nen Beast, you know, what it is or what it can do yet. Um, also, there was another interesting thing mentioned. Let me find it, because I've lost it. Yes, yeah, so someone told one of the Intouchables that the 10th and 11th prince have been found. And this answers a question for me, because the 10th and 11th prince are Kacho and Fugetsu, um, the two closest in age that tried to escape, and uh, Kacho, of course, died, and her Nen Beast took the form of her to protect Fugetsu um, for the rest of the journey. And I was wondering if anybody else besides Fugetsu would be able to see Kacho, since she's a Nen Beast, she's made of Nen, technically. Uh, but someone says that the 10th and 11th prints have been found, so that must mean that they can see her. So somehow it has a condition or ability where other people can see it besides just Fugetsu. Sorry about the loud cars outside, always pissing me off. Um, so that answers that question. So they're both alive. They're not alive. Kachu's dead. <laughs> Sorry. They're both found, and now uh, something will happen with that. I wonder if they're being, uh, let's see, they are also being detained. So they might wind up being around where Hulkenberg is, actually. So that would be interesting, too. And then uh, the uh, the chapter ends with the third prince. What's his name? Again, I told you I'm horrible with names. That's why I pulled this up here. Uh, Zhang Li. Uh, he gives a coin to one of his followers and says it's the number one coin. And another uh, follower says that Wait, I have the number one coin, and he takes it out, and now it's a number ten. What that means, we don't know. That's how it ends, but it's adding something to it. Maybe it's adding power, adding aura, adding you know more ability to use Nen. Maybe it's um, some sort of interest thing, you know, like an APR, not um, not using in the same way, but maybe it's something that kind of like builds interest that's similar to that. I don't really know. Um, so I have one chapter left to go before I'm caught up here and then uh, think about doing a live stream after that so we can talk about some Hunter Hunter and some other things. So that could be cool to do. Definitely have to refresh before that though because man, there's a lot of information, but I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. Like I'm on board, don't get me wrong. There's just a lot of information. So tell me what you guys thought about this chapter. This was 389 down below. Let me know what you think. Comment your thoughts and theories going forward, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next and final Hunter Hunter chapter review, at least until hiatus is over. So thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you next time.